Hey guys, and welcome back to episode number four of Road to Supersonic Legend. In the first three episodes, we talked about pro settings, car control, and aerials. And now we're going to be jumping into dribbling for the first time. I did discuss this a little bit in the pro settings episode number one. Uh, but now we're going to be diving into everything about how to slow down the ball, how to speed up the ball, how to hold the ball on top of your car without using boost, and how to manage your boost management around the, uh, around the field uh, while, while picking up pads and also, you know, maneuvering the ball in a way that you can really get some good control and start to get really good flicks uh, on the top of the net, uh, even as a lower player. But we're going to be talking about some advanced stuff in this in this series as well, as I discussed before. And this will be the last episode of this tutorial kind of style, and then we're going to be jumping into Bronze Rank and slowly moving up the ranks into Supersonic Legend. So let's get right into it. Hope you guys enjoy this series. Uh, so far, it's been really, really fun to record, and uh, I really love the feedback. I'm definitely listening to everything that I can to try and make sure this caters to everybody and even the top ranks in the future. But let's just jump into how to do very basic dribbles and then we'll go slowly, slowly more advanced as we go through this episode. Alright, before we jump into the 1v1 games, I'd just like to announce that the new merch is finally live on my merch store. The link for the store is in the description. Now let's get right into it. Hope you guys enjoy. So like always in this series, we have the controller overlay in the bottom left if you want to see how I'm doing stuff. Uh, when you jump into free play, which is going to be your best friend, by the way, as I discussed before, uh, just learning how to get the ball on top of your car is very, very important. Um, so as you can see, when you're driving uh, with the right the right trigger, you very quickly uh, slow down uh, when you let go of the trigger. But that's also a very, very important skill to understand when you're boosting and driving is that uh, when you hit the ball, uh, it's going to slow you down quite a bit too. If I, if I go at full speed and I hit the ball, you can see how much the, the ball actually impacts your car. So what's important to know is that when you're trying to get the ball on top of your car, you have to kind of cushion it um, to get it on top of your car. So if you look at exactly how I do that, um, you'll see that I actually hit the left trigger uh, a little bit before I touch the ball. Um, you can get better at this in the future, but you kind of want to like get to the ball as fast as possible. But then once you're actually at the ball, you want to hit the, the left trigger to slow yourself down. Um, so I actually l usually let go of the right trigger and sort of tap the left trigger. You can see that um, if you want to watch that bottom left corner, how I do it, it's a very quick action, but that's a really important way to get the ball on top of your car, just to, just to slow, slow down your car in the way to actually get the ball to pop up. So what I would do is just drive with the ball and try to get that touch first. And you can see how if you don't boost underneath the ball, it can get really difficult to get under it as well. So it's a lot of actions at once. Basically, I slow down, hit the, the brake, then boost underneath it, and then it sits on my car like this. So the next, the next thing you want to do, which I'm going to grab the pen and, uh, pen and ink tool real quick uh, to explain the hitbox of the cars. All right, so we're here with the car and we're sitting on our side just so we have a good view of the of the car and uh, how it is. It's funny, the hitbox isn't exactly what you expect. It's not like fully engulfing the, the entire car. It's kind of like the front is pretty accurate and it is, it is a box, um, but it kind of goes to like right here. Um, and if I wanted to make this a 3D view, maybe that maybe might be a little bit easier to see. So let me go into Rocket League real quick and just turn it like this. So it's more like like this. It's kind of hard to explain, but the front end is like not really where it is uh, in your view. So that's that's as accurate as I can kind of get it. At the height is about at the top of the roof, but uh, the front of the, the car has this little bit of a gap that it can kind of just float on. And it's not like the easiest thing to notice, but... Uh, Basically, you want to find the center point of the car when you're when you're trying to dribble. You want to try and find that center point of the car, and you can actually see if we do a if we do a straight view right here with the kickoff right here, this one, and don't turn at all, the car, the ball will be perfectly balanced on the car. So you can actually like see where the the middle of the the car is. Unless I score this, so actually you can actually see sort of where the middle of the car is. It's not the easiest thing to do. But uh, you can see that the middle of the car is actually like slightly uh, behind, like almost like over that little exhaust port, that top little piece. And uh, that's why like it's important to know where uh, where you can actually speed up the ball and slow down the ball when you're dribbling. And so what I mean by that is when you are dribbling here and you're, you've got the ball on top of you, um, basically if you look from above of your car, um, if you're on the right side of the car, um, if the ball's on the right side of the car, it's going to start to veer to the right. And if it's on the left side of the car, it's going to veer to the left. So... Um, it's the same thing with the front and back of the car. So and when you get it on top of your car, when you're finally starting to practice, you know, uh, with the ball on top of your car, if you want to turn left, you want to turn your car to the right to get the ball on the left side, and then it'll it'll turn with you. 
as you can see when I'm doing a circle here uh, with the ball on top of me, it's going to keep leading the ball left because I'm on the right side of the ball. And that's really important to know like when you're trying to like when you're finding that the ball is getting away from you like this, it's because the ball is not in the center of your car. So as you get comfortable with the control of the the uh, the ball here, you're going you're gonna to notice that I'm doing these little spurts of boost to sort of move, the, manipulate the ball into a spot where it gets around my car uh, onto a specific, specific spot. So if I want to do tighter turns here, all I have to do is get it on the back left part of my car. And you can see right here, I can do tighter turns. Uh, same with the car, if I want the ball in the front. If I want to get a little bit faster of a dribble, I want to let it l fall off the front of my car until it starts to speed up and I can catch up to it. If I want to slow it down, I want to start to speed up ahead of the ball. And then you can see that the ball starts to slow down here. Um, and you get used to this as you as you dribble. Um, what I would do is, you know, get the ball on top of your car, and start to like, just try to get underneath it at some point. And it'll start, it'll roll off a lot like that. And uh, that's just part of the uh, the na the nature of this this uh, activity here is just to get used to the uh, physics and get used to the control. But once you do get used to getting it on top, just see if you can do what I'm doing here and and see how I'm tapping the right trigger and sort of just getting used to. Uh, feeling the ball you want to feel the ball like actually have a feeling for what it's going to do and you can see as I see as I see it start to fall off I move to the right and then if I go too far and I go to the left then I have to, uh, or the ball goes to the left side then I'll have to you know adjust so if I overcorrect like this and now it's in the middle I might need to turn more left again to get it on the right side of my car again so I would get used to doing circles like this and just keep going around the field um, so far we haven't even discussed about maneuvering the ball and stuff into spots where you can get boost as you're moving um, that's a little more advanced, but we will talk about that in the future of this video. Um, but right now, I'm just trying to get used to, uh, or just getting you used to holding onto the ball. So once you are good enough at getting that, you can actually start to just keep the ball moving at a pace where it's a little bit slower, but you don't have to use any boost at all. So this is really important up in the upper levels uh, to know how to do these kind of dribbles with zero boost, because if you're low boost, which is going to happen a lot, um, especially at the, the higher rank, um, the, the people are going to boost starve you and stuff. You want to know how to like, maneuver the ball in a spot where you don't need to use much boost because then you can get some flicks and stuff which we'll discuss in a little bit shorter down the road here so once you get used to dri dribbling with like zero boost like this uh, i would say that you want to start to like you know transfer from going up on the car and uh down onto the floor and so how to get these these uh these balls on the top of your floor when they're moving is you want to kind of direct yourself with the way the ball's rolling so uh if the ball's rolling away from you like this it's gonna be really hard to get the ball on top of your car as you can see you need to you need to approach dribbles in a situation where the ball is rolling oh, like towards you like this. So you can turn into the ball and then boost underneath it. You can see how much easier it is to uh, to get it. If I roll it again like this and try to get underneath it, you can see it's it's already the problem is I talked about this in episode number three about the momentum and stuff. Is that because the ball's already got forward momentum uh, while you're trying to pick up the ball, it's going to be really really difficult to convince the ball to uh, get it like basically pop up. And that's also because when the ball's rolling towards you, there's actually like an angular force rolling into the ground. I know it's really hard to explain, but basically, let's say the ball was rolling from side to side. Let's say it was rolling this way. Uh, what would happen is that there's actually a, an angular momentum here uh, with the ball that's forcing the ball towards the ground. It sort of grips the ground a little bit because as it's rolling like this, it's got a force into the ground. So when you're driving towards this ball and you push it, there's actually a bit of a pinch uh, that happens it's hard to explain but basically you just get used to the physics you'll understand what happens here um it you can tell that it actually gets a bit of a higher pop and that's why like when you have the ball rolling towards you pretty fast it'll slam it right into the the, the ceiling uh let's see if i can get that happening so i think yeah i i, I have to like get a really fast roller here but let's see if i can do it so like that and if i go around the ball it's sort of slowing down already, but you can see it pops up really, really high Com uh, compared to when you just hit it like this. It doesn't go as high because it's, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but basically the ball is very, very physics based as you would expect in a 3D physics game. But uh, everything that has to do with the power of the ball has to do with what the ball is behaving like at the moment you're hitting it. As you can see, I don't have to do too much power to make this pop up every time. If I'm just tapping it after it hits the floor, although I missed it there. <laughs> but as you can see, as it's leading upwards, you don't have to do too much force to get it to pop up. But if I'm going before the bounce down like this, it's a lot harder to get power and uh, velocity upwards. Uh, when when you can use the ball's power that it already has with timing it uh, to get the proper shots. So I've talked about the hitbox and I've talked about getting the ball on top of your car a little bit. 
Um, you really just need to go into free play and just kind of get used to these kind of mo movements and getting used to boosting to change your, your momentum up. Uh, the next thing to include into your arsenal of dribbling is to get drifts in. As you can see, I'm holding the left tr trigger a little bit. Um, we discussed my settings before. That's my uh, power slide. Uh, that's going to be really, really important to get these like tight turns uh, in a spot. And also set up your spots for uh, on the field for a, a flick. So the one thing you want to probably do is get used to the, the ball being on top of your car. And then once you have that, I would basically fl do a side flip. A, a side flip. Whatever side the, the ball is on, try to side flip towards that. It's going to cushion the ball as you jump. Because as I jump, see how my car tilts to the side naturally when I jump? Uh, that's because the ball is actually forcing you down a little bit on that side. This is what I was talking about. There's an equal opposite reaction. Uh, you, you, if you know about physics, you know about how that all works. I'm not going to jump into, <laughs> you know, the laws of motion and, and stuff like that. Um, laws of physics. Um, but basically, because your car already is bouncing towards that side, it kind of cushions the ball nicely as you're jumping up. And that's why when you jump like this and then side flip, you can actually get a bit of a flick. And that's not too much, uh, too much uh, difficulty. In doing that, I can just drive straight like this and then just jump and side flip. And it, it does do a bit of a pop, which could outplay some lower level players. Um, as you get better, you can start to, you know, cushion the ball a little more with a faster dribble. And uh, and then once you've got a spot where you uh, boost into it, you can do a flick like that. And it gets a lot more power, a lot more speed. So the, the speed of your flick has to do with how fast you're also moving. As you can see, you get a decent flick just by moving forward and boosting. But what, you, what I kind of do when I'm, when I'm trying to flick the ball... Is I'm I'm dribbling slowly or something like that, and what I want to do is pick up the pace right at the last second with the ball, and then flick it uh, with a bit of an air roll. So how I do those flicks with a little like sideways air roll like this is you want to kind of I do a regular air roll, so I do a tornado spin, basically not really a tornado spin, but basically you want to angle it like that. Um, so you pull back a little bit in the bottom left corner, as you can see, if you want to go this way, and just hold air roll, and you'll end up doing a bit of a twist like that, and then you just backflip at the last second adds the extra power same thing with the other side i don't really do the other side too much um i'm definitely more often doing the left side because i can manipulate it however i want that way uh but it's important to know that you can do it on both sides with the right side of the car like this and then flick it up like that um and, then, and like i said this is just timing and getting used to it i would just sit underneath the ball as much as you can and try to do backflips see how if i if i pop the ball when it's on the very very top of my car it's usually gonna pop the ball too far away from my car when i'm in the middle of jumping and, and boosting and stuff so you want to make sure you find the right right spot. And this is just a matter of finding the, the, the right cushion spots on the car and the ball. Uh, and that just takes a lot, a lot of time. As you can see, if I want to do a backflip, having the car or the ball on the back of the car makes the most sense here. So right here, I can backflip and it pops the ball up. Um, it's not super important to the lower ranks, but just to know like how that works for uh, even the front flip flicks like that, you can get a lot of power too. If you want to pop the ball up higher, you probably want to do more of a front flip. If you want to pop, pop the ball more with speed, uh, side flips are probably the most uh, common uh, at the early ranks. And then what I said, what I said was combine the two, and you can get like a mix of uh, power and uh, and height, and that way you can kind of shoot towards, you know, up to the top of corners like that, and really throw off your opponents in the lower ranks. And uh, literally, I'm telling you, I would sit in free play for like six hours. I know this is kind of no lifing it, but I would, you know, be in engineering school. I finished my work and I was really addicted to this game and I sat with like a movie on and I would just sit here and and uh, and just practice my dribbling over and over again. I would hit it like this and try to like get used to getting it on top of my car. I would mess up a lot and it's just a learning process. Another another really key thing to learn about uh, dribbling is it doesn't always need to be on your car and you'll find that uh, if you watch 1v1 players or, or myself in a 1v1, uh, which I just put a video out yesterday. Um, you need to uh, have a control between on top of your car and on the floor. So you can get, this is what I talked about in the first episode of Super, Road to Super, Sonic, Super Sonic Legend as well, is that you want to get used to these kind of pops too, which are like half volley pops. Um, get used to the timing of the ball falling and uh, and sort of pop the ball up over and over and over again. That's a really important skill to have because at any moment that your, your opponent challenges, you can pop the ball away like that. So if they're coming at you and you pop the ball once and they come in, then you can just slam the ball up like that and pop the ball on the backboard. And it's, it, it does take a bit of time to get the timing. Um, like I said, I'm trying to release these episodes at a pace where uh, you can kind of take the information and learn on your own and then come back to the series um, and hopefully improve a little bit uh, with the information I've given. But moving back into these dribbles, basically you just want to get used to the timing of that half volley. We did talk about that in the early episodes about how much power uh, waiting until that half volley is. And then 
uh, to learn how to do catching with the ball and dribbles, I'll move into a training pack real quick and show you guys how to use those training packs to actually get some early starts at catching the ball and slowing it down. So I'm actually an aerial training all-star right now, and you can see the ball's coming towards us. And it, it, it's not moving too fast, but you can see that it, it is pretty difficult to uh, for an earlier player to, to kind of get used to the height of the ball. But as I talked about before, uh, if I'm pausing right here or uh, sitting in, in car cam, I reset. So here's the trajectory of the ball. And once you get used to the, the arc of the ball and knowing where it's going to land, you kind of want to lead yourself into that position. So you want to go towards that that location of wherever the ball... Well, <laughs> well you kind of want to lead yourself into a position where that ball's going to land. Um, and when you want to catch it, you can see if I like sit still, like right here, if I catch it, it's just going to pop off my car. And so what you want to do is sort of cushion that ball when, you, uh, when, when it lands. And the way to do that is to sort of boost into it and then kind of hit it and then kind of like I don't know it's kind of hard to explain I know this is like really really advanced already but like like I said for the early dribblers that are trying to learn how to dribble it really just takes time and you need to go go and sit in yourself in your own room and and sort of get used to touching the ball and hitting it around there's not much more you can do there's no secret answer to getting better at at dribbling in the basics but now we're jumping into catching the ball you can see I do a little bit of a boost into the ball to kind of cushion it and it's just timing uh, that that landing uh, as it comes towards you um, and there's different ways to, to catch it too if you're coming from the side and you can kind of turn away from the, the ball the last second and that kind of drops the ball into a spot where you can you can start to dribble it and, and and it doesn't matter if it goes on top of your car you can also cushion it so it lands and then you can chip into it so what I usually like to do with these situations where the ball is coming to a free spot is I'll touch it to the corner like this and then lead it either into the corner boost or near the wall and I can start to make a play uh, down the field um, as we talked about before in the earlier episodes, this ball indicator on the floor is going to be your best friend for dribbles. Because when the ball's in the air like this and you're trying to catch it, you can see when it's going to land and then you can kind of cushion yourself or, uh, you know, time your, your braking and your boosting to pull onto the ball. And this is all going to be, uh, you know, like I said, just time and practice in, in uh, free play. Get used to the popping the ball like this when you when you have it on the middle of your car. You can see that Squishy used to do this a lot in 20, you know, 2016 and stuff. He'd pop the ball like this and then land under it again. And just get used to the the physics of the ball bouncing off your car uh and reacting to that movement as it happens so you can get used to just popping the ball like this getting a bit of boost jumping again and uh i don't know just move around the field as fluidly as possible and the more you do this the more you'll see it come out in your gameplay in in ranked i've, I've already been trying to train my girlfriend into into doing this kind of stuff and she's already you know in gold in the first few weeks of playing so She's definitely uh, learning at a faster pace because of this kind of information. It's just a matter of training the right way. Uh, it's the same thing with aerials from the last episode is if you don't try for aerials, you're never going to get better at them. So if you if you always wait for the ball to fall right here and try to like hit the ball when it comes down, there's somebody that's going to be better than you that's going to come in and attack that ball uh, when you don't expect it. And sometimes you just need to get used to going for this aerial here and just going faster to the ball than somebody else. Um, it really does play a big difference and this is how dribbles are as well is while you're playing lower level players yeah you might be able to might be able to uh just catch this ball but what if there's someone challenging right there then you want to pop the ball like this away from them and then try to catch it again and this is gonna be more advanced stuff now that we're moving into it um i know this isn't like the most detailed tutorial about dribbling but i think that your best your best learning experience is going to be on your own with the ball in a, in a free play setting and just getting used to uh uh how to hit the ball and and tap it and and get used to the physics of it landing and stuff and uh getting used to this feathering of the boost feathering of the boost is really really important dri with dribbles as well like getting this little tap of the boost it saves your boost while you're dribbling and then you you end up uh you know having more boost for the final flick when you get to it and you can pop the ball like that and throw off your the the opponent's defense so now that we're back in free play i'm going to talk about the last few things here about uh manipulating the ball on the field to get boost pads um you can always lead the ball on the floor or or on the on the uh, on the car to manipulate manipulate the ball in a spot where you want to grab boost. So you can see how I'm dribbling it, but also dropping the ball and letting myself collect pads while I'm hitting the ball. So if I have some space, I can I can loop out wide like this. I don't have to keep holding on to the ball like this. This isn't always a good dribble to have because someone can come and stuff you and you can't see because of the the, the view uh, being so big of the ball. As you can see, if I'm dribbling this, I can't see the net at all. And so you want to kind of swerve around the ball 
and be in a position where the ball kind of does the work for you. And I think that's a really, really big thing to th think about is the ball doing work for you. If you've got space in the field, you don't need to be with the ball because then you can loop out wide and get more power, pop the ball like this, you know, come back into a spot and then take a shot. And that's sort of the uh, the whole thing about dribbling is it's very, it's very free and flexible. You have lots of space to dribble and move around the field whenever you have the time. Uh, you just need to recognize that in the game. If there's no one on you, then you can try, sort of drive with the ball like this, drive to the side, and then you can kind of throw in some fakes and stuff. And that's how people fake stuff, uh, fake stuff at higher levels, is they'll drive into it and then turn away like this at the last second. Someone might expect the ball to boom to the side. Um, these are all really, really important things to think about as you're moving the ball around. But as you can see, I'm not doing too much right here, not doing anything too special. But I'm just controlling the ball in a spot where I'm tapping it and then moving it to a boost pad. And I would do this in free play a lot to just get used to, you know, moving the ball around while you're getting boost pads and just getting used to controlling it. So I'm just tapping the ball around, uh, grabbing boost. This one should be back up in a second. There it is. And just sort of get boost pads as you're moving around. You can see I'm holding a pretty decent amount of boost. And if I need boost while I'm moving the ball too far or too fast, I can uh, just go grab a big boost pad. But you can grab a lot of boost in the midfield just from doing these turns and keep your momentum up. And that's really, really going to be important at the higher level ranks like Grand Champion or even Champ 3 or uh, any of the Champion ranks to be honest with you. Uh, as you're moving around the field, you can see I'm, I'm manipulating my car in a spot where I can grab some boost pads and keep with the ball. And, and that's a really good thing to uh, get used to. And that just takes time with what I've talked about in the earlier episodes is just getting used to where the boost pads are on the field. And sort of hitting the ball in a way that uh, puts it around opponents, but also gives you an advantage boost-wise. I didn't really talk about air dribbles in this episode, obviously, because that's a little bit more advanced. And I think I'll discuss that more as we actually go into the episodes of moving up the ranks. Uh, because air dribbles are very, very specific and it takes a lot, a lot of skill to start to get used to. Because you really want to think about aerials first before you even start to think about hitting the ball more than once in the air. And uh, that obviously makes sense. And it, it's something that I take for granted now that I've, I've gotten used to this game with 10,000 hours under my belt, almost 11,000. Uh, that a lot of this comes very, very naturally to me because it's sort of an extension of my body. Uh, but as a newer level player, I think I've, I've covered a lot of the basics that you can now dive into yourself. And sort of improve and slowly see yourself rise up the ranks uh, in the lower ranks of, you know, bronze to even platinum, I would say, if you get used to normal dribbles and stuff. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, I know it's really, really involved at times, but I don't want to get too advanced with the dribbles and stuff as we move, because I'll move into the uh, the more advanced stuff as I'm actually playing higher level players. But for now, that's going to be it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know if you guys like this and uh, what, what else you want to hear about, uh, what, what you want to know, um, even at higher level players, what you guys want to see in the episodes as I move through the ranks. But until next time, hope you guys have a great day and I'll catch you guys in the next one.